Hey guys, Hauser here. Looking forward to another lobster season in Florida coming up right around the corner. We've got the sports season at the end of July and then the regular season from August to March. Um, of all the things I talk to people about that I do, they get really excited about lobstering. So I wanna do a little video that shows how I do my lobstering and to get you prepared to lobster as well. And maybe even some tips and tricks that you've never thought about before while you were lobstering. First and foremost, you have to know the rules to get in the water. There's a pamphlet that the FWC puts out, has all the, the rules there. I'll go over a few of them that you gotta make sure that you're on top of. The first one is have your license. You need to be registered with the state of Florida, have a saltwater fishing license, and you also have to have that lobster tag or crawfish permit. You also need to know where you can go in the state of Florida, where you can actually lobster, where you're allowed to. There's a lot of protected areas that you're not allowed to lobster. And you also wanna know where lobster actually are. Um, mostly around South Florida and into the Keys is where you're gonna do your best lobstering. There's also size and take limits. So each lobster you catch has to be over a three inch carapace, which is the head of the lobster. That's the part that you measure on the lobster. In Monroe County during the sports season, you can only keep six per day. So Monroe County is all of the keys, uh, six per day. Anywhere else in the state of Florida, if you can find them somewhere else, you can keep 12 per day which is you know, double the amount. So if you have a better spot somewhere outside of the Keys, the reason they do that is because the Keys get super crowded. It's easy to catch them there, but it is boat to boat. I mean, it's just an insane time down in, in the Keys and in Key West. So if you're looking to go lobstering, the Keys might be the easiest place to go, but it's also one of the more competitive places to go. So keep that in mind. You also have to make sure that you have legal equipment to catch lobster. There's lots of different methods to catch lobster and they're not all legal in Florida. Some of these things you can do in like the Bahamas, but you can't do them in Florida. So make sure you have your legal gear and that you're using it appropriately so that you're not going to get in trouble with Johnny Law. And the best way to read up on all these different regulations, I gave you some of them there, is the FWC pamphlet. So make sure you get a hold of that, you go through it and you read it front to back. You got to know when you can lobster. So if you're doing the sports season, on Wednesday and Thursday, last Wednesday and Thursday of July, you have to know when you can get in the water. You cannot get in until an hour before sunrise on Wednesday, and you can't dive at night anytime during that two-day sports season. And then, uh, you know, you gotta be out of the water each day by uh, an hour after sunset. So on Wednesday, you gotta be out of the water an hour after sunset. On Thursday, you gotta be out of the water an hour after sunset. Again, these are things you have to do in order to not get in trouble. You need to know how you're actually gonna approach the water. Do you have a boat? Are you gonna be coming in off the beach? Um, and then when you do these things, you've gotta have equipment. And there's basic equipment that everyone's gonna need to lobster. I'm gonna go over some of that stuff. Um, I am not a guy who likes to spend a lot of money on equipment. I try to get away with things as cheaply as possible, but also as effectively as possible. So some of the things you're gonna need, first of all, Mask and snorkel. Mask and snorkel is going to be huge. You can't see anything underwater without a mask unless your eyes are just a million times better than mine, but you're going to need that mask. A good mask is important. It's got to fit your face. You don't want it to leak. So a little cheap mask off the shelf at Walmart really isn't going to do the trick. Uh, your best bet is to get a mask that is, fits to your face from either a dive shop or a reputable brand. Um, mask and snorkel probably going to cost you about 50 or 60 bucks to get one that is manageable. Uh, the snorkel is up to you. I've always not really cared about the top of the snorkel that keeps the water out. You may have a preference on that. Uh, I know a lot of people who use the, the little ping pong ball or the float that comes up and doesn't allow water in. There's other specially designed ones. I could go with a straight pipe one and be fine. Fins to propel yourself through the water so you can find these things. Fins, again, you want to have quality fins. They don't have to be the most expensive fins, but you don't want the cheapo brand. So with fins, you got two different options. You can get the full foot, which fits around your foot. Um, I don't recommend those just because when you uh, paddle through the water, you're going to develop blisters on your feet and you don't want, if you're doing a lot of swimming, you don't want that. So I wouldn't recommend the full foot. I would actually recommend getting the booties and then the strap-on fins. So the strap-on fins are nice. Once you put the booties on, which are like your shoes that, are, that have a hard bottom, they're going to protect you from anything you step on in the surf or in the, 
in the, on the ground. You're then gonna strap your fins around your booties and it makes it real nice to take it on and off. Just don't lose that strap. I've had that problem before. You lose the strap and your fins are worthless until you buy another strap or buy some new fins. The fins that I have are Cressy brand, which is a nice brand of fins. Um, the booties that I use are Evo, which are from Divers Direct. Divers Direct kind of like the Walmart of diving. So you can get good prices at Divers Direct. Um, you can get good prices on Amazon for sure. And then you can also go to a dive shop and you can usually get good prices at dive shops too, but be careful some of the smaller dive shops, they do have items that cost quite a bit of money and you can get that same item or a comparable one somewhere else for a lot cheaper. So just be careful when you, you do your research before you go to a dive shop. All right, you're also gonna need gloves so that you can hold on to these things. Lobsters are not super dangerous to hold on to, but they will cut your fingers up if you don't have a good pair of gloves. And when I say a good pair of gloves, I mean just a pair of gloves. They don't have to be expensive. I use work gloves, um, you know, three, four dollars for a pair, and those will do the trick. That's all you really need. You can buy the expensive gloves that are more neoprene that give you a little more padding, but I've never had a problem other than like a little poke through the gloves, um, but nothing that's gonna draw blood or anything like that. If you try to grab a lobster barehanded though, you are gonna have some cuts and scrapes. Any gloves are gonna do in this case, you know, cheap gloves are fine. I put some links to some of the stuff that I use below, those cheap gloves that I use. Um, so if you need a quick link to some of that stuff, then you can look down here. The next thing that I suggest that you get is a dive skin. It's not mandatory, but you'll thank me later if you're wearing a dive skin and you're trying to crawl under rocks or find lobsters that are farther back in the rocks. You're gonna want that dive skin to protect your arms. Um, if you don't have them, you're gonna touch fire coral, you're gonna touch other stuff and it's not gonna be pleasant. So dive skin, real thin, real easy, real comfortable. And the other thing is you save money on sunscreen because you don't have to apply any in that area that's gonna protect you from the sun as well. So let's talk about some of the equipment that you need to actually catch the lobster, measure the lobster, store the lobster. And I guess the first thing, the most important thing is your measuring device. You have to have a measuring device with you at all times when you're lobstering. It's one of the rules that you'll see in that pamphlet. So make sure you have that measuring device on you. There's two methods to catching lobster that are real popular. The first one, which is the most popular that, that most people do is the tickle stick and net way of catching lobster. So you've got your net, which you're actually gonna try and scoop the lobster or get it in the net. And then you've got your tickle stick and your tickle stick is used to kind of convince the lobsters to come out of their holes. You use it to tickle to bring them out and then you can drop the net on top of them. And there's technique to doing that. When you first do this, you're gonna be horrible at it. You're not gonna realize that the lobster go really fast backwards and go really slow forwards and you think you're gonna walk them in forwards into your net and you're never gonna see that lobster again. But it's all good, you'll get a shot at another one and it, it just takes time to learn those things. But once you get it, you know, it's the, the tickle stick and net are really effective. Now, the other way of catching them is with a snare. And that's actually what I do more, more often than not now is the snare. I used to do tickle stick and net, but the snare, it reduces the amount of things that I have in my hand. And it allows me to catch the lobster with just one device, which is also a tickle stick in itself. The green snare is actually the best snare to use in my opinion. It's real easy, it's flexible, it bends, it works just like a tickle stick but then you can expand the loop and put it around the lobster and catch them that way. I think it's just a more effective way of doing it once you kind of get used to it and it helps you in tight spots. You can't always fit a net in a crevice where a lobster is, but you can really get that snare back there and get it around them and tighten them and then they're not going anywhere. So that would be my preferred method out of the two. You're gonna need a bag to store your lobsters in. And there's lots of choices on bags to use. There's the uh, bag that has the automatic opening where you can shove a lobster inside without even having to open it. Those are pretty cool. They're a little more expensive and um, they don't fit as many lobsters. So I don't use those as often. I'm into the bigger bag because I'm usually catching lots of lobsters. And um, you know, one of the things about the bag I found is you want the bag to have that straight nylon part at the beginning before it gets to the mesh. The reason being is because when you do get lobster in there, they're gonna wanna you know, crawl up towards the front where the hole is or where the opening is. And if 
they're up there and they can't be moved down easily, they're going to come out of the net or out of the bag when you try to put more lobster in. So I like that little nylon mesh. If they crawl up there, I can just kind of wave the bag a little bit and get those lobsters to slide down into the mesh so I can open it. And then you're going to have to have a dive flag. And that dive flag is going to identify you in the water to other boats that there's a diver below the flag. So you want to make sure that you have one that floats. It fits the requirement as far as size. You can tie it to your bag. That's what I do. I get a long rope. I tie it to my bag. That way, if I drop my bag, then the flag is attached to it. And for some reason, I can't find my bag. I can come up to the surface and look and see, oh, there's the flag over there. There's my bag with all my lobster. I'll go pick it up. So got to have a dive flag. If you're with a boat, you can have a flag on the boat, but you got to make sure you stay close to the boat. And the actual size of the flag is going to vary. You want to get um, the smaller flag for towing around if you're just by yourself and the bigger flag if it's actually on the boat. So those are your options with equipment. Again, I've linked all that stuff underneath if you need a quick link to these things and the stuff that I use. Again, I'm not trying to break the bank with anything I use. I use the, the best product for the best buck. And uh, my stuff's pretty old, so it's, it's lasted a long time. Some of it might need to be uh, you know, revamped pretty soon, but the, the stuff overall, it's good, it works, and I'm gonna use it again this season. So you got all your equipment. Let me give you some tips on how to find lobster and how to catch them. Uh, depending on where you go, the terrain is gonna be a little bit different. So what you're really looking for when you get in the water is ledges, holes, uh, you know, things that lobsters can put their bodies under. You want to make sure everything that you find a lobster on is actual natural. You can't do it off, you can't catch lobster off of um, artificial stuff that's been dropped in the water. For instance, uh, bathtubs, car hoods, anything like that. They're, they make great lobster habitat, but the state of Florida has rules against that. Again, you'll see that in that pamphlet. Probably the first time you get in the water, you're snorkeling. You're going to look around, you're going to see rocks and things that lobster might be able to hide under. And the most basic thing that's going to give that lobster away is their antennas. Their antennas usually stick out from under the rocks. Not always, but it's an easy way to, to see some to begin with is look for those antennas. They're real straight. They don't look like they belong. Um, so that's a good way to find them. The other way to find them and the best way to find them is to actually dive down and look under rocks. You could use a flashlight. Flashlight's another good tool I didn't mention in the uh, equipment that you need, but a flashlight's good for when you um, go down and look under ledges, shine light back in there. A lot of times you won't see it when you just look your head under there because it's dark, but if you get a light back under a, a ledge, you can see there's some lobsters back there. Um, one other uh, tip here is don't just go blatantly sticking your head under a rock without kind of looking first because the other thing that likes to hide under rocks are eels and big moray eels, also sharks, uh, not dangerous sharks, but nurse sharks, they could give you a good bite if you stuck your face right in their face. So make sure you see what's under there from a little bit of a distance before you really get your head under there to look, um, but that's where you're gonna find the majority of your lobster. When you catch a lobster, you're gonna have to measure it in the water. You can't throw it in your bag until you know that it's the right size. You can't go back to the boat and measure it on the boat. It's a hard thing to do, but you get used to it. So you're gonna grab this lobster with your gloves. You wanna make sure you grab it in a way that exposes its head, okay? So the tail's gonna be kicking real good. I suggest you grab the lobster from underneath where the legs are. He's gonna grab onto you real tight. Just be careful, because his legs will fall off easily. And if he's not of size, you don't wanna damage his legs. So grab a hold of him, measure the top of his head with your measuring stick. And if he's big enough, you throw him in the bag. If he's not, you can place him back under the hole he was at, or you can just let him go and he'll kick and he'll find another hiding space. So you gotta measure those things in the water. It's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve. If you're doing it with a net, just grab the lobster right through the net. You don't have to pull it out of the net before you measure it. Those mesh nets allow you to really kind of get the, uh, the measuring device still on the lobster's head without having to lose it. If it's a snare, again, the snare is holding onto it pretty tight. You can measure it while it's still in the snare. And I suggest doing that. You'll lose a lot less lobster that way. So the cool thing about Florida is from Vero Beach all the way down to the Keys, there's like reef line that you can swim to from the beach. So on that reef line, there are lobsters. Depending on where you go, there's going to be more concentrations of structure for lobsters. But in that area, on, on sports season day, you're going to see boats just lined up all the way across the coast 
going down the coast and those guys are searching for lobsters. So if you don't have access to a boat and you're going to uh, swim it right off the beach, you can do that. Make sure you're a good swimmer and that you're going with people that you that are also good swimmers. But you can you can do that right off the beach. I'm actually going to be going out of Fort Lauderdale this year. I've got a hookah setup, which I'll show you in another video, um, which allows me to stay underwater for a long time. So you may have watched this and you thought, Hauser, I didn't really learn anything from you. I've gone lobstering before. I knew all this stuff. I'm always on top of the rules. And that's great. But I am going to leave you with one pro tip that's going to help you in your lobstering endeavors in the future. And I learned this not too long ago, maybe a few years ago, from somebody at Divers Direct. Um, the tickle stick that I showed you in the video, it's called the Pro Stick. It has a measurer built into it. And that measurement is exactly three inches. Well, that is the exact um, measurement that the lobster head needs to be in order to keep it. So that will give you an exact readout. Now, the other measuring sticks that you'll buy are going to be three and one eighth inch. And those are bigger than the measurement that you need. And the reason that they do this, I think, is so that amateur guys who don't really know what they're doing, don't know how to measure, they get all that lobster eye meat in there when they do the actual measurement. It gives them a little leeway because it's three and one eighth inch. So you can, you've got a choice. You can keep a few more lobster. I know you've, if you've lobstered before, you've been there where you catch a lobster and he's just short. It's like he's a hair short. Well, if you have this other stick and you measure with that stick, it is exactly three inches. So when you go to do your measurement, if it fits on that, you're good to go. And also when, when you get pulled over by the FWC, which you are going to get pulled over by the FWC time to time, use that to measure all your lobster just to show the FWC that I'm using an official measurement. I'm correct. All my lobster are big enough. Well, have fun lobstering this year. You're going to have a great time. Come back. Uh, leave me some comments on how you did or what, you, what other videos you'd like me to make about lobstering. The next video I make will probably be about my hookah setup that I'm going to take right off the beach. Uh, stay tuned, subscribe, click the like button. Thanks a lot.